Hey guys, Jordan here, and in this video, I wanna talk about our learnings for shooting over 5,000 real estate videos. All right, so on my channel, I talk about real estate photography. So if that's a topic you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. I was just looking back and we've shot over 5,000 real estate property videos. Obviously not me, I've shot a significant number of those, but um, I just wanted to share my thoughts on some of the things that you can should consider as you shoot real estate video from somebody that has shot a lot. Now, when I'm thinking about, you know, I think one thing that is not troubling but can be annoying as you shoot real estate videos is is all the editing requests right so what we try to do is to deliver a product the first time without needing uh, edits right so that that can be tricky at times so there's a few variables that are very important I think music is one of them you want to choose appropriate music um, for the video that you're sending you know the type of property make sure it matches and you don't want you typically don't want something too wild where the customer is like, whoa, what, you know? And then you can also get uh, input from your customers, um, right? You know, I'd say get their uh, appropriate logos, uh, their contact information, because that's also something. And then also one thing is that, that for me, from a team that shoots, we have several video videographers and several editors. So just make sure that you're delivering a consistent result to your customers. And I think that's probably one of the most important aspects of real estate video. You want your videos on your website to be similar to what the customer is going to get. The last thing you want to do is to have your customer have this grand, grandiose expectation because you put the five million dollar property that you shot one time. And now for their $200,000 listing, their video doesn't look like that. Well, obviously the subject's a little bit different, uh, but you wanna set uh, clear expectations. And you know, I wouldn't say this is our walkthrough video here and you spent way more time on that particular one than what you're gonna spend on there. So I would say just be transparent about the result that your customers can expect uh, to get. I think that's, that's very important. And then also communication is key. You know, if you have questions about um, what your customer expense, pick up the phone. Hey, I just want to touch base with you. Um, you know, what are the, the things that you want us to focus on in the video? Because there are some, some things, you know, like garages, laundry rooms and stuff like that, that the customers, some customers want in the videos and others don't. So I think if you capture that information up front, you're on the same page when you're shooting. Obviously, that's gonna save you time while you're shooting. Um, yeah, and then one other thing I would say is to set up your, I think setting up a property for video is different than photos, right? For photos, we don't want any fans on, but for video, we like to have a little bit of movement in our videos, whether, you know, typically we're putting uh, fans on low and, you know, just making a, a, some, some changes uh, throughout the house. Uh, maybe turning on the gas, the fireplace, um, you know, just things with movement. I think that helps. The last thing you want your videos to look like is a slideshow video. And that can, it can look like a slideshow video sometimes if you don't have any movement in your, in your uh, videos, if you're just doing slider lock shape. And then obviously diversifying the types of shots that you're getting. Now having a gimbal for, for video is very important because you can get a slider like shot, pull up, down, you can, diversify your shots to make your your videos more interesting and I think it's also important to spend five minutes after you're done shooting just to get some additional shots that might be different maybe you zoom in on your lens uh, lower your aperture value so you have greater bokeh you know a wider aperture value and get some detail shots that will kind of mix up and spice up the videos to make it more engaging especially if you're doing like a two minute video you need it to be engaging and just kind of uh, mix it up. We have some, uh, we use Vimeo. You guys can check out some of our property videos on Vimeo if you wanted to see some examples. You can just search the Lister Pros and, and see some of the videos that we put out there um, from a diversity of shots and whatnot. If you're brand new, you can get some ideas there. So anyways, um, that's it for this video. If you got value out of it, hit the like button and we'll see you guys on the next one.